With the release of Adventure 11 The Secret Wilds, we dive into more lore of the Ancients. A little backstory on Briggsy, but most importantly, a very exciting tease at the end of the book. Which maps out exactly where we're heading next. It sets an extremely awesome scene for Adventure 12, so I'll show you exactly why this happens next. Oh, and spoilers ahead. Adventure 11 picks up a while after the Cursed Rogue, where Madame Olivia has finally deciphered the memories of Captain Briggsy. With her memories clear, we have to head to the wilds to follow in Briggsy's footsteps once again, to discover why she failed to find a cure for the Skeleton Curse. With Tasha's curse progressing, time is of the essence. With Tasha's journal and Briggsy's mask in hand, we're all set to go on the adventure. Upon arriving at Crooked Mast and following the clues in Tasha's journal, we use Briggsy's mask to get a look into the past at older constellations mapped out by the ancients. The constellations tell a story and reflect real people. This information is reaffirmed, but first appeared in Season 4 with the Sunken Kingdom, and then again in Adventure 7, The Siren's Prize. The story outlines the Ancients' relationship with the Skeleton Curse, and these are new constellations which we're not aware of prior to this. The first constellation is the Owl, representing the King of the Ancients. The second is the Butterfly, ever fickle and fleeting. The final constellation are the Mountains, representing a challenge or adversity. This, in turn, allows us to understand the Butterfly was a prince, a carefree member of the royal family. He had to shape up and do something worthwhile. The constellations on Old Faithful Isle continue the story. The king had an advisor or queen, who was a strong and respectable woman, but another woman, the Black Widow, weaved lies and intrigue amongst the royal family. The final of the three, the palm tree, would suggest the location of the temple, or a way to get into it. The shape reminds me of the sunken grove, potentially confirmed by one of the orb teases before Christmas. The last island, Marauder's Arch, concludes the story. After the temple remains the High Priest, a woman. The hourglass represents two choices, right or wrong, but in this case suggests whether the person embraces the curse or cures it. The final constellation, the Waterfall, represents the barrier and confirms the temple and the cure resides in the Sea of the Damned. What happens to the Prince, the High Priest, the King, the Queen and the Black Widow is unclear, but I'm sure we'll find out shortly. This tale has huge implications for the future of the story in Sea of Thieves. The events in the adventure reach a climax after the final constellation, with Briggsy being brought back from the Sea of the Damned. Right at the last moment, the Dark Brethren swoop in. They inform Briggsy that they have an object that can buy Tasha some more time, and they will hand it over if Briggsy agrees to help them access the temple. Remember, the Dark Brethren seek to use the curse as a bargaining chip to recruit more undead to their cause, and potentially a weapon. Briggsy agrees with Wanda providing us a cursed cannonball, but Briggsy sneaks in the last pages of Tasha's journal, a warning. A warning of what awaits us in the temple. The temple, residing underwater, is filled with skeletons and the cure for the skeleton curse, with piles of treasure to tempt you too. With Briggsy confirming this to be in the Sea of the Damned, we'll need the Veil of the Ancients to get inside, which is already in the possession of the Pirate Lord. This is also hinted at when Briggsy describes the doorway to be green, like an emerald. This draws a comparison with the Veil Stones. Something else stirs beyond the temple, however, a monster that Briggsy doesn't want to let out. And we know who that monster is. My initial thoughts jumped to the Catman, suspecting that he was the real reason that the Brethren wanted access to the temple. Or even then, could this be one of the ancients from days past? We never find out if the prince took the cure or embraced the skeleton curse. We do know that some did embrace it, like the Eternal Guard, who likely dwell in the temple itself. But when really thinking about it, the answer is obvious. The ancients may have known this too, with their strong reliance on prophecy. Despite the Reaper's bones successfully resurrecting Captain Flameheart, his body remains still in a hushed sarcophagus, months after their victory. If you did not know, Captain Flameheart was defeated prior to the events of the game, not believing that the ancients had the means to destroy him. This much was technically true, as he was not undone by an ancient artifact. The crew of the Morning Star had indeed tried with the ancient ship, the Ophelia, which was destroyed in the final battle with Flameheart. 
Flameheart was defeated by Duke, where the Burning Blade was sunk using gunpowder passed through a box of Wanderer's Secrets. These can be used to communicate across vast distances, as well as passing objects through them. But Flameheart made plans in case the unthinkable happened. He used the Binding Ritual on himself to ensure he survived the battle. To ensure his resurrection was guaranteed, he would need to complete one more task. Despite the prophecy guaranteeing Flameheart's eventual rebirth, it doesn't say anything about a subsequent defeat. Instead of being revived the moment Pendragon became sealed, he waits, watching. We know he has ulterior plans that even the Servant of the Flame doesn't know about, and I think this is it. Wanda seeks the cure to win over pirates to their side, but what if she intends to use it on Captain Flameheart? The two were initially close, after all, with Flameheart being inside her mind before he was released, to the point that Wanda wished to be his queen. Now, after his rejection, she could finally have her revenge. Flameheart revels in his curse. He sees it as a gift, and what a way to spite the man by taking away something he loves so dearly. Flameheart could not risk that happening. Look carefully at the drawing, the monster looks to have three heads, but look at the colours. Red, with flares like flames. If you still aren't convinced, look carefully at this gate. Where have we seen this before? These gates exist around the map and are ancient in origin, and one used to exist at the Reaper's hideout before it was destroyed when the construction was completed. But the key one wasn't even in the game. Way back at E3 2016, we were treated to a gorgeous cinematic trailer showing off some aspects of the game. Towards the end, we have this shot of the Gold Hoarder's skull, looking at this scene. An army of skeletons, charging towards the pirates, with the flaming force of nature Captain Flameheart commanding them. And what is he appearing through? The very same archway pictured in Tasha's book. The moon will rise on a day like no other, where the veil is parted. But there shall be one who lurks beyond the veil, who shall make himself known. The Burning One shall seek not a moment of visitation, but a time of resurrection. If only the prophecy had already come to pass, the time of resurrection is yet to begin.